Welcome to Old Ass Movie Reviews. This month we're doing war movies, and this week's review is the 1979 version of All Quiet on the Western Front, the one starring John Boy, Richard Thomas, uh, mm-hmm. Donald Pleasance, uh, Ernest Borgnine, and uh, some others um, that I recognized but didn't know who the hell they were. <laughs> <laughs> This is a depressing movie. Yeah. But it's a deep movie. It's a emotional movie. They had mm-hmm. a good budget. Um, oh, but, the, 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 the sets, the props, the production value was fantastic. For, and I think it was made for TV. It was a made for TV it's, movie. You know, this, uh, give our listeners a backstory. This takes place a few years into World War I, um, probably. 1916 or so when this is going down um not long before it all ends um and it follows a class of students who um end up joining the army german students uh, join the german army immediately after graduation Mm -hmm. and are shipped to the front line um donald pleasance was was really good in this as the professor Yeah. yeah Um, But he reminded me of every. There's somebody who talked a big talk, probably never served his country, but he wanted to build up these students to go off and serve and make Germany proud and everything. And it's just this movie shows the horrors of trench warfare, uh, Mm -hmm. the gas, the just the absurdity of running toward each other with guns into machine gun fire. (laughs) <laughs> they, 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 the bad, from what I've read about World War One, is they tried to use the same tactics that they used for 200 years. Yeah. Which was walk towards the enemy. It's valiant. It's, you know, gentlemanly. It's whatever. Well, what they didn't take into account were the new weapons, machine guns. They would literally go over the top and charge a machine gun nest. What the hell are you thinking at that point? The first time that happened, you would think one general or corporal or somebody would have went, guys, we need to rethink our strategy. Yeah. Nope. They kept doing they it. Would, they would literally, from what I've read, literally fight over yards. Like, take a trench, the next trench 20, 30 yards forward of the enemy's trench, and then they'd be beaten back to their original trench. Well, at the beginning and of the movie. would die. Yeah, at the beginning of the movie, he talks about because the main character by Richard Richard Thomas plays mm-hmm. Paul, and Paul narrates and says, "You know, we've been fighting over this hundred yards yeah. in France the entire time." Nobody and and the again, I've only read. Uh, I'm I'm reading a lot more about World War One now, um, right? And just how insane, how fucking insane that war was. Yeah. I mean, every war, I'm sure, is absolutely insane. But the way these guys fought a war was just, I I can't even wrap my head around. Nobody tried to sneak around the back. Nobody tried to, they didn't use any, any planning, any, any, um, subversive tactics that they literally would just clash straight on with one another. And it's, it makes no sense. Like, they dug their trenches, and that, that's – I'm going to jump ahead a yeah, few go years ahead. to World War II. Um, the French decided to go to the Maginot Line again when they found out the Germans were going to invade them. Well, all the Maginot cannons were pointed towards Germany. They did not turn. They didn't turn all the way back around. They didn't – they pointed it in one direction. They did not move. The Germans looked at that and went, we ain't doing that shit again. And they went around and came up behind them. That's why the French surrendered so quickly. Because their military was taken completely. Why no French general thought, you know, we did this once 20, 30 years ago. This is a really dumb thing to do. Yeah. I don't know what happened in the French command at that point. If somebody said, hey, we shouldn't probably do that. And other generals were like, no, no, this is a great idea. We're going to do trench warfare again. And Germans you're right. No it wasn't doing that shit again. It wasn't much time uh, with no, when like World War Two between World War Two and World War One. Twenty, mm-hmm. thirty years. It's like holy yeah. shit. <clears throat> um, yeah, maybe twenty years. Um, 
that's ridiculous. Yeah, and I, but at least, at, you know, at least they didn't get bogged down in another trench warfare, and which was every general from, from Germany had already fought that shit. And we're like, yeah. yeah, we ain't doing that again. So I don't know what the hell the French were thinking. I but, don't know. Uh, yeah, World War One. I, I mean, the more I've read about it, the more I've just thought this, this was probably the, one of the most insane things in the world for anybody to do. And why in the hell would anybody fight another, another war after this one? And we're still fighting wars, what, 2021? We're going into 2021 Still now? haven't learned. Still haven't. Still and the fighting this... wars on this planet. Yeah. I don't get it. I mean, I, don't I get either. that you have to go kill bad guys that are trying to kill you. Oh, right? absolutely. Uh, and why those bad guys were trying to start a war is beyond me. Well, <laughs> it's like you guys haven't read the history book. What? <laughs> well, and that's just it. If you if you look at why this war started, and then we're looking at a battle between Germany and France, it doesn't make any sense because the Archduke uh, Ferdinand of Austria was killed, assassinated, and Germany. Uh, I think it was um, Kaiser Wilhelm said, "Yeah, yeah." You know, told Austria, "You have a blank check to invade Serbia. We'll we'll support you." And then he goes after France. Yeah. He decides yeah. now I'm going to take everything. What well, the hell? Well, the guy who got killed was like, he was a nobody. I mean, he was almost, he was so low on the royalty level that he was almost insignificant to the family. Yeah. The thing that made him famous is the fact that he got assassinated. Yeah. I mean, when you look at the reason now, it's not like he was a leader of a country. It's not like everybody knew who this guy was. It's not like he was like Mr. Peacemaker or Mr. Warmonger or anything like that. This guy was really a nobody on the royal family in, uh, of, of Austria. And bang, all of a sudden started a world war. Somebody yep. needed to start a war. That's what it I was. I don't know why. I, this, is, this, is, <laughs> this is where my conspiracy theory kicks in. Like there's a whole lot of money, a whole lot of people that have been making bad decisions for you know, or families of people making bad decisions for hundreds of years for yeah. this planet. And that's a really bad decision. And they didn't do it because they didn't make them. Well, um, Ernest Borgnine's character, what, Cat? Was that what they yeah. called him? Yeah. He talks what about a good that. character. Ernest Borgnine. Oh, he was awesome. I've seen him in stuff that I've liked him in before, but man, I really liked his acting in this and his he character. He was really good. This. So good in this. Yes. He's he's my favorite. He He really grounds this movie. Yeah. Um, and he's such a central character um, to mm -hmm. the boys and, and everything. But when they're laid up in France in an old blown up house or whatever, yeah. he's talking on the bed about somebody's making money from this. Somebody's profiting from this. I, the Frenchies Not didn't me. bother me, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, when the one kid says, well, one country insulted another. And he goes, well, and Ernest Borgnine's character is like, what, did a mountain range insult another mountain range? Exactly. What? Yeah. I don't know what's going on. Why are we even here? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was. Hmm. It was but telling. That, that's the odd thing. I mean, I get if your country is attacked, you defend and you attack. Yeah. I don't get how this war started. Like, and I've, and I've read a lot about, like, things that were happening around that time period. But I just, my mind can't comprehend it. Maybe I'm just not smart enough, or maybe I'm just not insane no. enough. I don't I, know. I think Cat nailed it with yeah. somebody's making money. It's somebody's getting something out of it. And it's the same families that always have. And it's, I mean, I'm sure if you really dug deep, you could figure out the, the five or ten families that have been running this planet for a thousand years. There man. you go. <laughs> Even in and 2021. Again, conspiracy theory, but it. <laughs> Prove me wrong. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to say no because um, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Um, one of the things uh, that I like, th this movie does have some humor in it, believe it or not. Oh, yeah. And yeah. it's it's when the, the kids are harassing uh, the post, the mailman. You saw that coming from a mile away. Yeah. So Himmelstrass, I think, was his name. Yeah. Himmelstash or whatever. Um Ends up being their drill sergeant. <laughs> Boy, he's a prick too, man. But when Himmelstoss ends up on the front line, the tables turn. Yeah, yeah. And he's a they, little uh, Weasley fucker. <laughs> yeah, Richard Thomas, and they're all charging the front line, and he's he's hunkered down trying to hide, and Richard Thomas just starts smacking him in the helmet. Get your ass up that hill. Get up that hill. Get up that hill. Yeah. Right, basically dragging him up the hill to go into into the charge. And he ended up getting a damn medal from the Kaiser. Yeah. And yeah, as Kat you know, said, because he's a good German, he 
knew when to run forward and when to run back. <laughs> That's right. That's why you got the medal. Yeah. Oh my gosh. But like even Richard Thomas said, when everybody was like, I can't believe he got the medal. Richard Thomas is like, Hey, let's give the guy his due. This medal, he deserved it. You know, like yeah. that. That's pretty telling. He even invites him in. Yeah. At one point. Yeah. But I, I honestly thought something more was going to happen with that. I did too. It was like a setup that because of the look. I don't know. Maybe the movie was edited that I don't know about, but there's there's something missing there. Or yeah. Maybe it's in the book that this guy gets his comeuppance or something. Yeah. I, I tried to read All Quiet on the Western Front many years ago, and it was ponderous to say the least. Uh, I never finished it. I don't know how far I even got into it. This is right. probably right after high school. Um, couldn't get into it. This movie made me want to revisit it. Yeah. But this um, movie at I, times was hard to get into. Yeah, I had to watch it in two sittings also. Yeah, it's the uh, but it was good. It what it what it accomplished really well, I thought. How do I word this? It is the inglory inglorious of war. Mm -hmm. Um too many people think that war is something to be um jumped into everybody everybody looks at the klingon empire like oh warriors are uh you know like from star trek yeah and it's like oh well, that's how the kind of warrior i'd be no i'm th i just thank god in heaven i never had to go into a war yeah i don't think i could come out mentally in shape and this movie shows that <laughs> um and the movie does definitely show that i i think they did and the writer of the book did a really good job of explaining this this was nothing to go into lightly. Too many people, I think, took it lightly. You know yeah. what I mean? Going into it. And I think that's what this was about. I think well, that's what this if you could really look at the story and the sub the subtext, don't take your life and the lives of people that you're putting on the line lightly. Right. Um <sighs> let's see, hold on. I've got some notes here. Okay. A lot of notes, but yeah, no, you're you're absolutely right. And there was one one scene before uh, Richard Thomas Paul got shipped off or was getting ready to go. His dad mm -hmm. was like, you know, I can't. I'm jealous. You're gonna, yeah. you know, be marching through the streets of Paris and everything, and seeing this as something glorious. Mm -hmm. And when Richard Thomas came home after being wounded, yeah, yeah, his dad, his dad, the asshole. Is like, why don't you put on your uniform? I got to show off my soldier boy or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, you know, it's it's not this glory. And those old fuckers at the table talking about, well, I do this and I do that. And it's mm -hmm. like, I just want to reach and smack them because those they have no clue. And it's like you said, too many people think it's all this glory of the the Klingon Empire. Today's a good mm -hmm. day to die, right? <laughs> you know, without right. seeing the horrors and the the toll it takes. I, and, I can't imagine. You know, when uh, one of the scenes they show, uh, they're they're just sitting around taking a break and truckloads of coffins come up. Yeah. And then the new kids show up. And is I it think the Ernest least they Borgnine, sent something to fill them? <laughs> yeah. Ernest Borgnine said, isn't it nice that they sent, they sent the bodies to fill them? Yeah. And they were and kids. He walks, up, he walks up to the little kid. He asks the kid, how old are you? And he says, I'm 16. Yeah. And he looks at the knife, and the knife is all notched on the yeah. back. And he says, you did this? He goes, yes. And he says, you better get rid of this knife, because if the French find you with this, they're not just going to kill you. Yeah. Because that does such damage to people, and it was it was meant to do harm. He goes, nobody uses this anymore. It's, it's a common it, – basically, it was a gentleman's agreement between the armies. Nothing yeah. official. But it was a gentleman's agreement. We don't use these notched knives like this anymore to kill each other. Right. You know, <laughs> like, whatever, whatever the reason is, then he tells him about the shovel. You do right. this with the shovel, you hit with this. And it's like, oh, my God. And then later on, it comes on. That comes up. Yeah. You see Ernest Borgnine and I think Richard Thomas swinging their shovels in the trenches. They are. And there's other guys, guys sharpening right. the edges of their shovels. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I do remember my father one time telling me about that. He was in the Korean War. And I remember him telling me about the shovels. Hmm. And, and I do remember him telling, saying about the sharpening. Wow. Now, my dad was a bullshitter. 
Now let, that's got to be a, a no. <laughs> but after seeing this movie, I was like, ah, okay, there there might be something to that right. story after all. So yeah, that's and I guess maybe today hey, I don't know. Yeah, I'd have to ask a soldier. <laughs> um, but I I don't. I don't understand that whole trench warfare thing at all. It, it didn't make sense. Uh, I get trenches to hide it, hide from bombing, but the way that they fought that war was so ass backwards. It, it was doomed to failure. For one side or the other was going to fail. And then when the Americans finally showed up in was it 1916 when the Americans entered the war? 1915. Yeah, I'm not. They entered near the end. Um, they, yeah, uh, much. that was all fresh supplies, all fresh booty, all fresh, uh, feet on the ground. And Germans, just Germans, and I think the Poles were part of the German army. Yeah, I'm not sure. Good. I know Germany was starving. Uh, yeah, everybody was starving at that point. Everybody yeah. on, on the, on the, on the side of the Germans was not in good shape. No, because there were blockades um, and they were, everything was lo- blocked off from them. Yeah, it was, I, they were choked. It's crazy. And then, to, to make matters worse after the war, instead of just trying to say, okay, look, you know, let's not fucking do that again. Kaiser, you got to step down. We're going to put in a new new guy. We're going to, we're just going to do whatever we got to do, blah, blah, blah. And I could see punishing a country for it, whatever. Mm-hmm. But the way, the way that, that treaty of Versailles took place, it was just a matter of time that World War II was going to happen. And there is a British, I can't think of the guy's name. There is a British guy that was involved in the treaty and said in 20 years, there will be another war because of this. Treaty. <laughs> sure enough. And sure as shit. It was, it was a little bit longer, but not much longer. The guy, the guy basically pegged it. I can't think of the guy's name, but I remember reading an interview, like an old interview with this guy. And he said it during the time of the treaty. He said, because of this treaty, there will be another war in X amount of years. And everybody thought he was crazy. Everybody's like, no, 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 they're beaten, they're defeated. He goes, no, they're not. Nope. And, and nobody wanted to talk to him. Whenever World War II broke out, silence that motherfucker. Yeah. <clears throat> Incredible. Just why? <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't sense. make sense. Because, because you know, even, even then, Germany tried the same thing. Oh, we're going to take it all. It's like, calm your ass down. Yeah. <laughs> calm down, dude. Relax. Chill. How about you just fix the potholes? Yeah. But, motherfucker, why don't you pick, fix the fucking pot? Why don't you leave the Jews alone and fix the potholes? Thank you. <laughs> Stop blaming the bakers and the fucking uh, tailors for all your goddamn problems. <laughs> oh, my God. That's Mother. a whole other can of worms there. <laughs> yeah, but but you can see yeah. even in this movie you can see all of that yeah. building up. Yep. Um, and it's crazy. It, it's that that movie really hits on a lot of uh, uh, points for World War II and why it started. Mm-hmm. But it especially points at the ignorance of humanity of the day and even of now, really. Um, yep the problems that people have, most people don't want to just sit down and say, Hey, 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 let's not start bombing each other. Um, how about we just not attack each other and kill each other and let you guys do do what you're going to do. As long as you don't get out of hand, you know, that's fine. But nobody wants to to think that way. I know. And, and again, my mind can't comprehend it. I mean, even in this country, to an extent, there's people who just want to make other people's lives miserable. I don't know why. (laughs) Everybody alone, man. (laughs) And we can bring it all the way to 2021. You still have people like portrayed in this movie who just think war is great and grand and for the fatherland or motherland or whatever. And it's like, you assholes, you don't understand what it's costing people. You don't understand the toll. And that's one of the things about this movie. I mean, it really shows when uh, Richard Thomas comes back. Oh yeah, he, he has the ability to go back and be a cook or anything else, but he goes right back to the front line, mm-hmm. and that's common today um, with troops mm-hmm. that come home and they—that's all they know. They left their brothers behind, and right. that's it. Um, they have a sense of purpose, guilt. and and I don't, I don't think they get enough uh, backing. No, they don't have support um, when they get from anybody, here. and and I think it's. Some of it, I think, is people don't understand it. 
Like, yeah. I, I can't comprehend it. I mean, I know it exists, but I can't, I've never been there in that situation, so I can't comprehend it. So I think that something like that has to be handled through the military and through people who are ex-military who do and under have been there. Um, and, and I don't, I have nothing. I feel stupid for saying this, but I don't, I don't have any, any, uh, guidance on this. Really. Right. Um, I, I've had, just people, don't start stupid fucking wars and then we good. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, if you're attacked, defend, defeat yeah. the enemy. That's fine. I get it. But maybe before you attack somebody, make sure you're, you know, not attacking yeah. for a stupid reason. Well, that's one of the things. <laughs> while, while this movie is a hard watch, because I do feel it's paced a little slow. Maybe it was if it was a, like a four night event on TV or something like right. that, <clears throat> where I would get pieces at a time. Um, it would have felt better. But to try and watch right. it in one setting, it was very slow. It was very slow moving. Um, it yeah. starts off with a bang. Oh, um, literally. Yeah. Literally. Um, and that's where, that's where you see, they spent a lot of money on the sets, the mm -hmm. effects. It looked real. It looked like old French villages blown to hell. Mm -hmm. Um, it was bloody. It was disturbing. Um, John boy stabbing that poor bastard in the foxhole and letting him waiting until he's almost dead before he decides to help him. Um, yeah, yeah. that was hard, <laughs> but, but yeah, but he couldn't shoot him cause he would have given away his, yeah. his location. I just stabbed him again. Put him we out of his something. misery. I don't know. I'm, that poor bastard. <laughs> it's like the the one scene where the kid gets injured early on uh, after the group shows up, and Ernest Borgnine's character pulls out his gun and is going to shoot the kid. Yeah. And the medics are running. Oh, yep. the kid gets hit with the gas. Kid falls into oh, the gas. Oh yeah. Into the mustard gas. And Ernest Borgnine is just going to shoot him. He's one yeah. of his own guys, but he's going to put him out of his misery because he knows what the mustard gas does. Yeah. And then the, the 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 Red Cross guys show up, so he can't yeah. can't just put the kid out of his misery. Cat getting killed. That was tough. That was a tough watch. That was hard. And he's um, carrying him the whole time. You don't even know how the whole time he got shot on the way. Didn't even <clears throat> know it. Was talking just ten minutes before. And the fact that he's carrying him is what saved John Bo um, Richard Thomas and yeah. Sarah's life. <laughs> Is the fact that he was already carrying them. Yeah. Because the bullet hit him from in the back. Behind, yeah. So it was it was hard to see him go. He was one of my favorite characters. Um, let's talk about the ending going full circle to the beginning of the movie. Yes. Um, two things two things I noticed, but let's see what go ahead. you got. Uh, I was just going to say, uh, drawing the bird. The bird. John uh, Richard Thomas' character starts <laughs> drawing the bird. Uh, Ernest Borgnine, the first piece of advice he gives to him when he shows up is keep your head down. Yeah. The kid stands up, starts drawing the bird. He stands up in the trench. Bam. Shot to the head. Goes down. Well shot. Um, no pun intended. Just no, the, no, I, I, seeing the bird drawing in his hand and his hand clench. Mm -hmm. You knew what had happened. Yeah. And it's in the mud. When his hand hits the mud, the picture and everything. With with him draw, stopping and drawing the bird, I think at that point, Paul had a feeling of his old self, um, mm -hmm. an, a feeling of humanity, a, a feeling moment. of somebody he hasn't been. But he can't be that person in that area. Right. And the minute he becomes that person, he dies. And yeah, that's the person that dies in that in that instance. So it's it's symbolic. Um, yeah. Uh, how humanity is destroyed by this as well. So it's, I think it's a very good ending, but it's a sad ending. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I think the guy who wrote this was German. I think mm -hmm. it was, I'm not sure what year it was written, but I, I'm guessing this guy saw trench warfare. Well, an interesting fact about this book, I read that uh, when the Nazis took power, they burned it. Shocking. They burned everything, but this one in particular was one of them that was uh, oh, yeah. for banning. Yeah, absolutely. They burned. Yeah, a lot it was of against that. war. It's an anti-war book, and yeah, hey, they, everybody should they be against the Bible. Book. They burned, yeah. you know, yeah, anything that they didn't like. Boy, that sounds familiar again. Speaking of twenty twenty, 
<laughs> People try to go back to that shit again. Yeah, here but, we go. Uh, uh, yeah, it's no, thank you. <laughs> yeah, you'd think people would learn, but they don't because they nobody don't read anymore. They don't. They don't study history. Um, <laughs> I saw a recent movie, fairly recent, um, The Hurt Locker. I don't know if mm -hmm. you've heard of it. Uh, I've heard Bigelow. of it. I haven't seen it. It, uh, it's, I believe it takes place in Iraq, follows uh, Jeremy Renner as uh, an explosive ordnance uh, disposal guy. Uh -huh. uh, same kind of thing happens with him. Um, he ends up finally coming home and he can't take it. He can't make it. He's, right. He has to go back. And that's how the movie ends. He goes back to his, he leaves his kid, his wife, and goes back to the family on the front. Um mm -hmm. Because that's all he knows. And right. it's, it's as we're saying, people don't understand just how fucked up this is. And until the stigma is removed from our soldiers having difficulty adapting, um, yeah. it's just going to continue. As you said, you know, people just keep repeating it. But this this is a, a common theme. And when I saw that, I was like, wow, this reminds me of the Hurt Locker or mm -hmm. Shawshank Redemption. How when they got out, they couldn't adapt and had... right. People found their self going back, so it's it destroys the mind, humanity. Um, yeah, I can't even. Mm. My mind can't comprehend something that horrible. Yeah, I'm thankful I've never seen it. Um, I, I so. mean, you know, through books, you know, through uh, documentaries, you know, through you know things that you've read and learned that it's awful. It, it's kind of like um, let, not last temptation of Christ. Uh, um, Passion of the Christ, passion that the movie where they, mm -hmm. you know, everybody knows Jesus died for your sins. But then when you see what the Romans did to him going to there, that's holy cow. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a moment where you're like, oh, that's what happened to him. I yeah, mean, it's not all this the Bible glorious. Says this, but it's, it's all kind of on the surface. But when you see it, you're like, oh, that's what the Romans did to people when they were going to crucify him. Yeah, it's pretty, yeah. pretty bad. That's sort of the same feel that I get for this. Yeah. But you know how bad it was. They did a really good job um, portraying it and showing it. There, There's a – who's the guy who did Lord of the Rings again? I'm, I'm Peter Jackson. Watch. Jackson. Peter Jackson did a documentary on World War I that I want to watch. Oh. And he – not only did he colorize it, but he – he did something digitally to the old film so they don't look so poppy. Mm -hmm. So it looks like it's like filling in the gaps, basically. Oh, okay. And it's a very smooth, it's very smooth filming. And some of those guys, I mean, some of that film footage looks like it was shot yesterday. Wow. And some I of that stuff that. that he shows in that, it looks what along the lines of what we just watched only worse in many ways yeah. because it's a documentary that i don't think pulled any punches on world war one well good it's basically asking a lot of questions um and i want to watch that i want to watch that whole thing and mm -hmm. um that's just amazing to me that he did this but he took the time to do it yeah i, I yeah. definitely have to look for that yeah it, it's just one of those things that would attach itself well to the all quiet on the western front yeah, here's something I, I definitely have to point out about this movie because we we talk about this a lot of movies having being over heavy handed with messages. Yes. I didn't see a heavy handedness here. I just saw no. what was an accurate portrayal. And if you can't if you watch this and, and still think war is awesome, well then fuck you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> well, he even says that uh, uh, the writer says that, I guess that must be in the beginning of the book. About uh, he's not passing judgment. Yeah, this is just a story of what happened or yep. what it was like, and that's it. He's not saying you know anybody no. was right, anybody was wrong. This was just one guy's story. I mean, there might have been a guy's story that came out of World War One thinking it was the greatest moment of his life, going "Fuck yeah, I'm a hero." Yeah. I don't see anybody coming out of that like that, <laughs> especially in trench warfare. But I'm sure there room. were some guys who came out thinking it was the greatest moment of their life and boy this is wonderful because some people are just crazy yeah. Or, yeah or just just you know that's what they were meant to be was a soldier yeah and when i and i say soldier i don't mean that as an insult I absolutely no. do not mean that as an insult i mean some people are made to be artists some people are made to be a dress designer some people are made to be a fighter 
because that's what they know how to do. That's what they do really well. Some guys know how to do movie reviews. And yeah. so there's guys like me who do movie reviews, but don't really know how to do them. <laughs> right? <laughs> Some people do a podcast but, that only two people listen to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we'll just keep going. We don't give a shit. Um, but I just I, I just think that there are some people that, that that was the perfect moment for them. And without certain people in those moments, things could get a lot worse. I hope that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, it, no, it does. And I just appreciated that it was it wasn't preachy. It was right. here. It is. You see it. You feel mm-hmm. it. Um, I haven't seen this. I saw this movie probably twenty plus years ago. Right. And I remember it being sad. Um, if I had never seen it, I probably would have been a punch in the gut to see John Boy bite it like that. I know, um, right? So I knew that's that was coming. I'd forgot about Cat, and it's like, oh yeah. shit. <laughs> but it yeah, was, you um, just you just knew he was going to buy it though. He was the best character movie. in the movie. He was. I think his character, what strikes you so hard is that his initial wound is just such a minor wound. He just can't walk. Yeah. Um, and the fact that he was the father to all those kids. He was their father. I mean, he was basically the father. He was the one who, I like his initial meeting. He's like, what did you, what did you learn? And, you know, all of this stuff that you learned at, at boot camp. Well, I'm going to try real hard to make you unlearn that. Yeah. Because that will get you killed. And they're all just looking around. He says, don't, don't look around. <laughs> you know, look at me. <laughs> That's pretty <laughs> accurate. Um, not that I've been in war, but just leaving boot camp and going to the regular Air Force. That's one of the first things that I notice is like, where'd all the shit go that I learned? Yeah. <laughs> you know, right out, Probably the out the window. This is how we really do it. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay. That is to get you to listen. This is what what is really going to happen now. Yeah, I uh, I just better people than me. That's all I can say to that. <laughs> yeah. you know? um, and God bless everybody who did it because I I couldn't. <laughs> so final final thoughts on All Quiet on the Western Front. It it this particular version of it, especially, is slow paced. Um. It's high quality. It really is. It, the, the production value is top notch. I, I, if I hadn't known that it was made for TV, I would have thought that it was a movie, a motion picture release at a theater. Um, they did a really good job. They had some really good actors. Um, yeah, I, I recommend it. If, if you just like a good story and character building, this is a really good movie to watch. Knowing that it's depressing, it's a depressing movie, but it, it's good. It does yeah. have its high highlight moments that are kind of funny, yeah. uh, but I think that's just life. Life yeah. has its ups and downs, and you know, where you're really laughing and then you're really sad. Uh, but yeah, it's a good movie. I I recommend it. How about you? Um, I do recommend it, but I agree. It is slow paced. It's mm-hmm. um, I took two days to watch it just because I couldn't. It just, yeah, I start to lose interest. Um, yeah, but you're right. Great production value, great acting, um, everything all around. And yes, it's a sad movie, but I think it's also a real movie. Um, meaning, yeah, it's a story that has to be told. Yeah, I think everybody should watch it. If you mm-hmm. at least bit curious, I don't know enough about World War One, but now after watching this, I like you want to dig in. I was reading last night all this stuff trying to see well what started this and then then seeing that the, the <laughs> germany just went the other way and it's like what the hell is wrong with yeah. you <laughs> yeah. so it's, it, it it makes no sense like like no. i do remember reading about world war one i've I had i've read some history books and I'm, i've always been interested in it because of all the new technology that came out during that time period not not just war technology but technology in general and the fact that it, n- it never made any sense for a no. fourth rate nobleman to be shot that nobody cared about, that nobody even knew existed until he was assassinated. But now he has a band named after him. And that guy, I'm sorry, the more I've read about the, yeah, right? right. The more I've read about that cat, the more I think he was set up by his own people. 
No, very well could have been. He was set up. He, I think somebody looked around and went, who can we kill that nobody's going to miss? Oh, Ferdinand and his old lady. Take them out. Yeah. How can we start a war? How- yep. That's how it was. How can Here we, we start go. a war? Cat nailed it. Um, yeah, so I, I definitely give it a, a watch. It's, yes. um, be prepared. It is sad. Uh, we have spoiled the entire movie, this podcast, as we always You're welcome. do. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> but it's good, but it's good. Uh, so next week, Kelly's Heroes? Kelly's Heroes, yes. Please I am. Completely opposite direction of what we just watched. <laughs> this I've been reading about it. I am so looking forward to this movie. You're, I think you're going to really enjoy it. Compared to what we just watched, you're going to really enjoy yeah. Kelly's Heroes. <laughs> I need something light and happy, <laughs> or at least not so damn depressing. <laughs> Don Rickles is in Kelly's Heroes. Let me put it that way. Yeah. All right. And he's not playing the serious Don Rickles that I've seen in movies where you're like, holy crap, he's a cold blooded killer. <laughs> he's the Don Rickles that we all know and hate and love yeah. all at the same time. He's a good character. Yeah. I uh, like I said, reading the synopsis is like, oh, my God, this sounds really good. Um, you're going to enjoy it. You're so definitely going to enjoy it. So next week, Kelly's Heroes, be sure and join us on Old Ass Movie Reviews and you can catch us anywhere that you can listen to a podcast or on youtube or facebook or instagram all Thank thanks you. all thanks to you because i have no idea what you're doing you're magic you got your little magic wand you just go out there throw it. that's Speak it that's it no that's work dusty. included just little magic, magic wand. wand we'll see you all next week <laughs> Cheers. goodbye